Hello! Thank you all for tuning in again to another video that I'm making about narcissistic abuse. And this one will be basically focusing on the internal and so the internal damages and behavioral manifestations of narcissistic abuse. And the reason why I entitled this video The Shame for Existing is that essentially, you know, all the abuse does in fact make the child especially from a parent to child point of view makes the child feel um, like they don't exist and they feel shame even as an adult and i feel shame even as an adult that i even i even exist and as a as a young one um in my household i felt like if i even asked for any type of help or consideration or any need it, there was always a question of why I was even asking in the first place. So I, but so I, I went to a website and I'll link the the site in the description. But it had, it literally had point by point different side effects and um, expressions and the effects of of narcissistic abuse. And it in the same um, website on the same page, it also um, laid out the comparison between narcissistic abuse and alcohol and the effects of alcoholism in a, in a household and how basically the effects on the child the children is essentially the same and with a few variations so i'll just go through and read some points so the first um, category would be internal damages these are things that you don't necessarily see but the 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 victim of narcissistic abuse deals with this and as they're coming out of the fog they start to acknowledge these things are happening. So they definitely feel f um, blamed for everything. They feel disapproved of and guilty, um, inadequate and insecure. And all these things are because, you know, they were blamed for a lot. Especially if they were the scapegoat in the family, they were, they were considered the blame for everything. Um, they feel undeserving and unworthy. They feel... Uh, they are they are unaware and they they, they don't, don't understand what is normal healthy behavior when they leave the narcissistic narcissistic abuse they're they're not aware because they think that's normal it's one thing if you're married to a narcissist most most get divorced you know and then they move on and they get they they cure themselves because they were something they were a person before they came into the to the relationship but the child that's all they know so they have no idea what healthy behavior is they just know that something isn't right. Um, one of the things that I, I experienced, and another point on this list is um, um, impulsive lying, and they and they put in the context of lying for survival because oftentimes, you know, when say a narcissist asks you, "Did you do this?" You know, in order to not cause a fight and not not be yelled at for three hours, I mean, because it feels like that after they're done with you, the narcissist just keeps on yelling and yelling and yelling. They love to yell, you know, but. Um, but but they can we can come up with this kind of defense mechanism to just just lie no i didn't do it because it saves us for the moment so that becomes a habit and so when they want to avoid something they might they might just lie and so i found myself especially in high school lying about the dumbest things what did you eat for breakfast where'd you go this weekend you know i would just lie i would just lie Thankfully, that's that I'm I'm not like that anymore, but that that was a real dealing with me because I, I as an empath I personally I sense truth and I feel great discomfort when I lie or when something of untruth has 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 reached me. Um, also, another point is self judgment. We tend to judge ourselves very harshly, and um, we cannot receive compliments. That's a big thing because. We don't feel like we're, we're deserving of any and because we're not used to it we, it's almost like we're it's like we're skeptical you know people people may say something about the way we look or the way way we speak or what kind of friend we are we're like oh shut up like or you know we just say eh, whatever it doesn't really matter that's that's the inability to receive compliments because of the lack of of a feeling of adequacy feeling of worthiness to be complimented um, and capable of communicating some uh, one's wants or needs. And I will say this is, I will raise my hand to this because even now, not e going after going on no contact with my dad, I would say 
I would go off and on, you know, but now it's been a year since I've, since I've actually spoken to him. Um, and, and he is, he is the narcissist of our family. And I, I feel that even now the effects of that, of all that I went through in my household, I still don't feel like I can ask for anything. I still feel ashamed when I have to call my mom and say, Hey, you know, I mean, it even takes me a while to even conjure up a text to send to her to say, Hey, I need, I'm, I'm struggling. I need money because even in college, in college, um, the, my, my first and second year, my, so I would get sent money on a weekly basis. And it wasn't that my parents couldn't afford anything more or they, but they literally would just give me, my mom would send me $10 a week. And they, they didn't consolidate for like a month so I could go grocery shopping. It was just $10 a week. So imagine, so I would go, I would go days without eating. I would go days and I would never say anything because I was ashamed. I didn't feel like I, I, it was really hard to even say, Hey, I'm hungry. I need food. I need money to buy food. I didn't even feel ad adequate enough to, to do that. But that's a huge thing, feeling even ashamed. That's, that goes into the existence, you know, shame for even existing. Is that we feel ashamed for even having to ask for needs because we're so used to them not being met. We're so used to them being questioned like, why are you, why do we have to hear what you need? What about what we need? What about us? How do we benefit from this? Um, being extremely loyal in relationships that are unhealthy. Um, and even I would say, Right now I'm, I'm working on not, I, I call this not running after people. Because what I do is I invest so much of my energy and my care and my time and contacting and, and, and spending time with my friends or people that I consider my friends, you know, or companions. And then maybe one person that I'm really close to will contact me back, but the rest will just expect that I contact them. And it's not that they, I don't think they know they're doing this, but I think that's just how it is. So, but I'm learning not to run after people because if I, if I've, if I'm valuable to them, they will contact me. So some of the behavioral manifestations, I'll try to make this video quick. Uh, we can be extremely controlling of our environment, which is, um, very true because we're so used to not being in control of our life that we feel like, okay, if there's anything I can control, this has to be it, you know? Uh, we can judge ourselves and others too harshly and that's very that's um i remember because i i play piano and i got rusty for a while and i was playing at a friend's house and every time that i would screw up on a, p on a, a song that i was playing i would say oh you suck oh you're an idiot and after after we left her house she was saying to me why do you talk to yourself like that that's so that's not healthy that's so not healthy and you don't suck. You play very well. But I was in the mindset of, I suck. I didn't even know I was saying it. I just knew I hated, I hated playing. Anyway, but same thing with my voice, you know, and singing, I, I, that, you know, I just hated the sound of my own voice, you know, and I'd worked so hard on it, you know? Anyway, but that's another story. Um, let's see, we can definitely, cover our insecurities with perfectionism. So in trying to be perfect and trying to make everything around us perfect, that's just a cover because underneath it all, we're actually very insecure. We're very incapable. So in order to appear that we have everything together, we, we force ourselves to get everything together, to be perfect, to expect perfection from others. Um, where we find that um, we definitely avoid criticism and disagreements, you know. Actually, another thing it says is that we have um, we have difficulty being in, in heightened environments. And I, heightened environments meaning even like being around a slight disagreement between friends, we feel uncomfortable. Or if they just, or if they just like, they're just not in a good mood, we feel like, ugh. I think that's the empathic part, just absorbing people's energies, but just not feeling comfortable in that environment because we never know if someone's going to blow up. So these are some of the, um, the, uh, bullet points on this list. And I will, as, as I said, I will link the, um, the website in the description. It's such a good website and it's just, 
just um it's not even organized it's just i mean i guess it's organized but it's not even anything special it, but it just lists all these different aspects that people that have suffered from narcissistic abuse may exhibit um so please like and comment your experience and um you can subscribe but really the point of this is just to not only for myself to release what my experience but also to help others to gain more more of a, a well-rounded perspective on the effects of narcissistic abuse so thanks for listening and i will i guess see you in the next video